Heavenly Father, the secret of being charged so that we don't die in the middle of life is to supplicate the throne of heaven until our humanity is charged with the divine nature of divinity. This is what you did every morning and every evening. This is the purpose of an outpost. And when we learn this, Lord, we will be charged to finish the work. Help us to learn this today as we leave in this final charge to see that the relief work is a part of your plan to finish the work not only in the world, not only in the church, but in our very heart and in our very home. Bless us to this end, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'll take your Bibles and turn to the book of Mark, chapter 1. <clears throat> we want to pick up right where we left off. Mark, chapter 1. Question. What is the system of living that is the solution to the problems of life? What does heaven call it? That tells me you're still sleeping. Amen. Amen. I'll say it again. What is the system of living that heaven says is the solution to the problems of life? Out, post sentence. Does he say it once or repeatedly? Repeatedly, repeatedly. What is the system of living that is the full and final display of Satan's system of living? The bottomless pit, anarchy, revolution. Good. All right. Now go to Mark chapter 1. Notice beginning in verse 35. Mark 1 beginning in verse 35. When you get there, let me know by saying amen. amen. The Bible is speaking of Jesus. Did Jesus have an outpost, yes or no? Was he teaching? Was he preaching? Was he healing? Was he publishing? Was he living in the country? Was he ministering to the cities? Did he finish the work in the outer court? Did he have an outpost? Yes. Now, notice what the Bible says in Mark chapter 1. What was he getting first in that outpost? Mark 1 verse 35 was the first thing he was getting groceries, produce. Was that the first thing he was raising in his outpost? No. The Bible says, and in the morning, rising up where? A great while before day, he did what? He went out. What do you think he went out into? He went where? He went into his outpost. He was in his country outpost. And this reason says he went out where? Into a what? A solitary, uh, and departed into a solitary place. Now question, when it says solitary, you know, sometimes we, we think of what's happening today and most people think solitary is getting on a computer and playing cards. That's not what this is talking about. When it says solitary, what is it talking about? All alone. So he got into a place where he was not crowded with companies and inhabitants, but all alone, what did he do? All alone, what did he do? There he prayed. So in our posts, if we have not learned to get all alone in the scenes of nature and commune with God in prayer, do we have an outpost? No, we may be out, but we don't have an outpost. This is the secret to Christ's ministry. This was the secret to his life of power. This will give us power to work the cities just as God said. Do you want to be a part of the loud cry? Where would I find the loud cry in the Bible? Revelation 1. Let's go there. Revelation 18. Go there. Revelation 18. Revelation 18 chapter. Now we're reviewing quickly. What is the reason of why the world is going to embrace the National Sunday Law? Because today, today, the majority of the world do not go to church on Sunday. Am I right? Today, the majority of the world are not interested in God. So the question is, what is going to cause the majority of the world, what is the devil going to do to cause the majority of the world to believe that the uh, uh, Sunday law is what they need? Because the devil places the Sunday law in the context of what? Solution. Problem and solution. He points to the problem of their condition. And then shows the Sunday law as a what? Solution to life's problems. When he does that, those who rejected the Sunday law now do what? Embrace it. This is what's going to make it Sunday law. Until the government 
is presented by the religious leaders that the son-in-law will solve his problems, the government will say separation of church and state. But when the government feels that it cannot solve the problem of its government until or unless it has a religious uh, influence, then they will combine it. Are you with me? But it only happens when it's in the context of a solution to a social problem of life. Are you with me? Now, all the devil did was look at God's plan and then counterfeit it. The third angel's message has been preached to us since 1844. When is it going to become the loud cry? Somebody talk to me. No, don't, don't tell me Sunday long. Tell me, don't tell me event now. Tell me the experience. Now, you, no, listen, listen. Back up. I, I, I want to jog your mind and think now. What? No, everything that God does, Satan has a what? What did the devil do to make the world accept the Sunday law? What did the devil do? You just told me. What did the devil do to make the world? He placed it in the context of solution to the problem. Let me say that again. Can I, can I say that one more time? I know it's early in the morning. The reason why the world, let's read it. There are not many even among educators and statesmen who comprehend the causes that underlie the present state of what? Those who hold the reins of government are not able to solve the problem of more corruption, poverty, pauperism, and increasing crime. They are struggling how? In vain to place business operations on a more secure basis. If men would give more heed to the teaching of God's word, they would find a what? solution of the problems that perplex them. So the papacy comes now as the problems are magnified in the revolution and says, I now have the solution to your revolution and it's the Sunday law. The mark of the beast. And the whole world wonders after the beast. So I ask again, what is it that the devil does to make the whole world embrace the Sunday law? He puts it in the context of the solution of life's problem. Now everything that God does, Satan has a counterfeit. So question, what is it that's going to make the third angel's message, what is it going to make it swell into a loud cry? When I put the gospel in the context of what? The solution to life's what? Now, where do I learn that from? In this little book, Ministry of Healing, does it tell me that? In this little book, Ministry of Healing, page 363, it says the gospel is a what? Wonderful simplifier of life's what? Problems. So unless we understand the gospel that way, we will never give it as the loud cry. You see, right now, the outpost center is nothing more than a demonstration of the principles of the gospel in everyday life. Are you with me? We found out about the revolution. The gospel would have brought to France the what? Solution of the political and social problems that baffle the skill of her clergy, her king, her legislators, and finally plunge the nation into anarchy and what? Ruin. It says, but under the domination of Rome, the people lost the Savior's blessed lessons of self-sacrifice and unselfish what? They had been led away from the practice of self-denial for the good of others. The rich, remember centralizing the wealth and power. The rich had found no rebuke for their oppression of the what? Why is there going to be a revolution? The oppression of the what? You see, the, do you know that 90% of the world have been so uh, suppressed that they're now getting ready to express themselves in a revolution? It says, the poor, no hope for their servitude and degradation. The selfishness of the wealthy and the powerful grew more and more apparent and oppressive. For centuries, the greed and flagacy of the noble resulted in grinding extortion toward the peasant. The rich wronged the poor, and the poor did what? Hated the rich. But what would have solved that problem? The gospel. It would have been the solution to the French Revolution. And when it becomes worldwide, the same solution is there, and we must learn how to understand it this way. Now, has God put together a plan to teach us the gospel in a way that we can position ourselves as problem solvers? Who or what character in the Bible solved problems that we used yesterday? Joseph. And what Joseph did in Egypt, every seven Adventists is to do to the world. Am I right? Now, let's read this now. We're talking about Revelation 18, the loud cry. This says, let's read it together. What did it say? 
There is no change in the message that God has sent in the past. Medical Ministry 304. The work where? In the cities. The work where? In the cities is the essential work for this time. When the what? Cities are worked. How? As God would have them. What would happen? Let's remember, study from cause to? The result will be the setting in operation of a what? Mighty movement such as we have not yet what? What movement is that? Talk to me, somebody. That's a loud cry. In fact, I, I normally put this up, quotation up there, but I didn't uh, put it in this time. But if you search through the spirit prophecy and put mighty movement in, the only movement it comes to is the loud cry. So when it says setting operation of the mighty movement, the only mighty movement is that work of the angel that comes down from heaven and lightens the whole earth with God's what? Now, what is going to make that angel come down? Talk to me, somebody. Look at the quotation. Does it mean just going into the cities and doing the work? Because false reformation says that the enemy of souls is going to bring in a, rep a supposition that, that, that we can go into cities and do a wonderful work, but the Sabbath will be lightly regarded. So there's a false reformation that will work the cities. So it's not working the cities. It says, work them as God would what? So you mean to tell me that God has a design in working the cities? He has a blueprint to work the cities? And when we work the cities as God has said, then what is the result? Now, our sisters up top, our sisters up top, please don't do that. Praise God. So when we work this, the cities as God designs them to be worked, it says the result will be the setting in operation of a what? So when we work the cities the way God said work them, loud cry. Are you with me? So what do you think the devil's plan is? Stop the cities from being worked the way God said. Are you with me? Well, what is God's way of working the cities? It is God's design that our people should locate inside the cities. Outside the cities. And from these outposts, do what? Warn the cities and raise in them memorials for God. There must be a force of influence in the cities that the message of warning shall be heard. We are to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves in our efforts to secure country properties at a low figure. And from these outpost centers, we are to work the what? Now, when we do it that way, the result will be the setting in motion of a mighty movement. Are you with me? So the question then will be, what is going to give us the ability to raise means to work in these outposts to do it the way God designed? Is that a good question? Or well, you don't need no means. You, you have all the means you need. Is that right? Does heaven have a financial plan? Does heaven have a blueprint? Now, can you expect God to bring you out of the city, into the country, if you don't do the blueprint God said? You know that right now many are inventing ways to get out when God has already given us a way. And so what we have to do is find out what is written. Noah built an ark, but he didn't build it based on his own ideas. Was a blueprint given him of what he was to do? What if he said, well, I don't want that blueprint. I'm going to figure out my own way to make the ark so that I can go through this crisis. He would have drowned. That's right. That boat wouldn't have floated. Amen. So what we have to find out is, if that's a type, did God give us a design of how to get into outposts? Did he give us a design how to start sanitariums? Did he give us a design how to start institutions? So this says, volume 759, let's read it together. The Lord will give to our sanitariums, whose work is already established, an opportunity to cooperate with him in assisting what? Newly established plants. Every new institution is to be regarded as a sister helper in the what? Now it is a great work, little time. Of proclaiming the third angel's what? God has given our sanitariums, our what? An opportunity to do what? Sit in what? Study the prophets' writings the same way you study the Bible. Did you notice setting operation? Look back. When the cities are work as God would have them, the result will be what? Setting in operation a what? So what's going to set in operation that work is the sanitariums are have the opportunity to set in operation. So the devil then must destroy sanitariums and make you think you have one and you don't have one. He'll make you have a health facility that does not have a blueprint of a sanitarium. Now this says... God has given our sanitarium this operation, a work that will be as a what? Stone instinct with life, growing as it is rare by a what? 
Do you understand that right now in 2015, the invisible hand has already started pushing this stone? Now, I don't know about you, but I'm going to jump on that stone. Praise God. And you may not jump on, but I'm holding on, brother. I'm holding on. Anyone who holds through this stone is going through. But if you let go, well, that's something else. God has given us sent him an opportunity to sit in opportunity to say, there will be as a stone, instinct with life, growing as it is a roll with an invisible hand. Let this mystic stone be set in what? So what of those institutions are going to set in motion this mighty stone that will cause every other institution to be prepared so that there is an outpost for the finishing word so that the loud cry can begin? What is the central institution? Sanitary. So then the question is, how do we start sanitariums and outposts the way God designed? Is that a good question? Volume by, by 9, page 80. God's purpose, God's, God's, now where does success come? When we align ourselves with God's what? Not our facilities. Not our boasted greatness. It's when we are fidelity, have fidelity to the creator's purpose. Now this says, God's purpose that by the sale of ministry of healing it, and what else? There they are again. I love those books. Don't you love them? Did you read your hand now? No, you didn't read your hand now. You need to read your hand now. It says, Christ our blessings and ministry of healing, much means should be what? So you mean to tell me that this is a fundraiser? So much means to us should be raised for the work of our what? Now, how many sanitariums do you think are really raising their means this way? Well, that's interesting. I, I won't say none, but I'll tell you this. You'll be hard-pressed to find this. It says, for the work of our sanitariums and what? And that our people may thereby be free to give their means in other ways. We don't have to beg our people for this money. We can get this money the way God said get it. It says, if our people will, not tomorrow, but what? Now, now engage in the sale of what? Not simply every book. Now, there's nothing wrong with general canvassing. That has a place in God's work, but the relief work is not general canvassing. This is something very specific. It's not talking about carrying 100 books. It's talking about two particular books that must be used in a very special way. This is not happening right now. It says, if I be one now engaging in the sale of what? These books, as they are, we shall have much more what? Means that we, than we now have to do what? Carry the work in the way the Lord designed that it should be carried. What is the way the Lord designs to carry the work? From what? It is God's what? So how does the Lord design the work to be carried? It is God's design that our people should locate where? And work them from what? So the Lord designs that he should carry the work from outposts, but we don't have money to have outposts. Well, does he have a plan to raise these funds? What is it called? The relief work. Praise God. You want some more? Amen. All right, let's get some more. Education, one in five. This is, I got to put this bit in there as we hasten on. Never forget this. When you study history, you'll learn this. Some people think that Madison, E.A. Sutherland, and McGann, that they were some great intellectual people, and that's how they were able to start Madison and do all these wonderful things. But I'm going to tell you something. It wasn't McGann or Sutherland. It was the fact that they embraced the purpose of God. Now this says, in the word of God only is this clearly set forth. Here is shown that the strength of what? Nations as of individuals is not found in the what? Someone says, well, that person had the opportunity to move to the country. They had a better opportunity than me. That's not the issue. Someone says, or what? Someone says, well, I have a health facility. I have a publishing house. I have a country land. But that's not the issue. It says, that appear to make them invincible. It is not found in their boasted greatness. It is measured by their fidelity with which they fulfill God's what? How could Medio Persia take down Babylon? Medio Persia was a silver kingdom. Babylon is a golden kingdom. Medio Persia had a weaker military might. Babylon had a stronger military might. How in the world could a weaker nation overtake a stronger nation? God's purpose. How in the world could 13 little strong colonies uh, declare independence from the largest nation of the world called Britain at that time? They didn't have the facilities. They didn't have the land. They didn't have the money. They didn't have the manpower. And yet, a new nation came on the scene. How did they do it? Because they were so strong? The Bible says, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. It was the purpose of God. This is history. In fact, this is the chapter on how to study history. 
It says, in the word of God, only is this clear set forth, here is shown the strength. We, we read it. In the word of God, this, we said that. It says, the work of God there represents from age the striking similarity in every great reformation or religious movement. We pass on. He directs his servants on earth for the great movements for the care for the, of the work of salvation. Men are instruments in the hand of God, employed by him to accomplish his what? So all throughout the plan of redemption, purposes are carried out. And in the most holy place, does he have a purpose? Now, you should be able to tell me, please, I have faith in you. I have faith in you. All of you. What? And then let me, Father, help us. <laughs> please, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. I have faith in you, amen. What is the purpose of the most holy place today? Now, now you, you should know by now. Now, I, I would accept that because you're right, but, but, but I, I'm not going to let you if, you, if you're a relief worker, I can't accept that. Now, if you're just a general seven evidence, we're well, okay. But if you're a relief worker, I can't accept that. You know why? Because you've got to know the purpose. You won't have success unless you get the purpose. Remember, you have to line up with the purpose. God's purpose in giving the third angel's message to the world is to prepare a people to stand true to him during the this is why we have given what? Sanitariums, schools, publishing houses, hygienic restaurants, food factories, treatment rooms. This is why we care for every line of work in our cause. This is the purpose that if you don't align yourself with it, your relief work won't, uh, 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 won't work. And that's serious. You have a relief but no work. So we've got to line up with the purpose. Now, once we understand that purpose, then we begin to recognize the significance of what mm -hmm. uh, must take place. God's purpose in giving the third angel's message to the world. This is the purpose. This is why we have all of this. Uh, first manuscript, 221. Now, we know that the judgment will pass from the dead to the living at the passing of a what? So that means that we should have our outpost in place by the passing of a Sunday law. Is that right? In fact, it will be best we need them before the revolution, which is just a little bit before the Sunday law, which means we need them now. Is that right? All right, let's pass on that. We know that. We've been robbed of this vision, and without the vision, all these institutions have perished. Do we want to bring them back on the scene, yes or no? Yes, then we need the vision to come back. We don't want to be robbed of this vision. Well, how are we going to do this? These are these lovely books. It says many schools. Now, what I want to do briefly, before we hasten on, what I want to do briefly is look at, first we looked at the hygienic restaurant yesterday. Remember that? We saw the hygienic restaurant was started by the sanitarium. Now, we want to look at the school. How does God want to start the school? Look what it says. Publishing Ministry 364. Let's read it together. It says, many schools. How many? Do you want your school to be a part of it? Can you have an outpost without a school? No. Are to be established where? So what type of schools are these? Country outposts. These are, this is a part of an outpost. It says, and the proceeds from the sale of any book. Wait a minute. How do we come back to Christ's object lessons? From object lessons will be needed in what? What work? Estab Remember, this is the purpose why we establish schools. Well, how are we going to establish schools? We have to have some books. Is that right? Every book or Christ's object lessons. Every book or Christ's object lessons. Proceeds from the sale of object lessons will be needed in this work. The sale of this book is under the Lord's what? You mean to tell me that God watches over these books? Now, if you raise your hand now, you will notice that she says that these two books, Christ's object lessons and the ministry of healing, should be handled like none of my other books. Of all the 25 million words, of all of the 10,000 pages, she said, these two books are to be handled like none other. Now, he will continue to make it a blessing. Now, continue on. Publishing Ministry 366. The book ministry of what? May do the what? Uh, for our what? And help institutions that Christ's object lessons has done for our what? Well, what did Christ's object lessons do for our schools? They provided the means to establish the school. Did it say that? So then what will... Uh, ministry of Healing do for our sanitariums. They will provide the means to establish what? For what purpose? So we can just make people well. 
to prepare a people to stand true to God during the investigative judgment when it passes from the dead to the living at the Sunday law. You'll find very few health facilities even teaching that. And that's contained. It says, the book, this book, talking about ministry of healing. This book, notice what it says. Let's read it together. What does it say? It says, this book contains the what? So what is our book called? No, no, what is our book called? The Wisdom of the Great Physician. Who told us that? The book contained the wisdom of the great physician to meet, and that was the book that was to bring about our sanitation into existence. Are you with me? That's what happened in CMA. This is what McGann used way down when he went to start a new sanitarium. That's what he did in California. The sale of the book, Ministry of Healing, will bring in means for the health of our what? But health institutions today don't need any money. They have all the money they need. Am I right? All the health facilities have all the money they need. Am I right? If you're at a health facility, you know that's not right. If you're at one of our health facilities, you know that you're struggling. Now, this says, and for the aid, not just for the institution, but for the aid of what? Those sick ones who could not, unaided, get the benefits of sanitary me what? Are there people who want to come sometimes, but you don't have money to take care of them? And so you turn them away. Why? Because we're not doing the relief work. It says, now let those of our people who wish, do you want to do you, do you help the sanitarium work? Do you want to start the outpost? Do you want to set in motion the mystic stone? Yeah. Well, how can you do that? The prophet tells you how. It says, now let those of our people who wish to help our schools and sanitariums unite in the work of doing what? These books as far and as what? So if you want to get outpost started, get these books and get them out to as many people as you can. Now, did I say that or did the prophet say that? As the Lord's what? We may take a special interest in this work and help to get the precious light before the people. Now, I don't have time to go through all the quotations, but your hand, I'll give you more. I'm going to go through a few more, but you're going to find out the inspiration actually says there is no better home or foreign missionary work than to do this. Do you know that if we were to go to India or Africa or China, this is how you would start an outpost or a sanitarium. And this would make the people around you understand what your work is and disarm prejudice at the same time. Now. Christ object lesson is a book that speaks for itself, and it has accomplished a good work as it has been sold. Now, notice why most people don't know I can't sell the book object lessons. The object of its sale is what? So when you carry the canvas for object lessons, you're supposed to tell why the book was brought into existence. But if I ask the average canvasser, why? What, what year that, that was, was Christ's evolution brought into existence, and what was its purpose? Do you know that that's not part of the canvas training in any canvas and program? I've canvassed before. That's not part of the training. Now, this says the object of the sale is related, and notice what happens. Money has been received that has relieved the what? But more than this, many by reading this book have been blessed by its lesson of truth, and many others will be blessed by reading it. Are you with me? Let's continue. Let the word of selling Christ's object lessons be taken up into this city. Endeavor to interest the what? These are the businessmen. And what you are trying to do? Tell them. Do what? It even tells us a canvas. Tell them that the proceeds from the sale of the book you are selling will help you, will help you simply get through school. For missionary purposes. Go to the large schools. Tell the teachers about what you're trying to do. Now, you know, I was sitting on the plane. Uh, we just came back a couple weeks ago from doing a meeting in Canada. Some of you from Canada were there. When I came back, when I was going there, I sat next to a principal on the plane, a principal of one of our schools in Alabama. She was a, 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 very, a very high position, the principal. And as I talked with her, guess what I talked to her about? She says, what do you do? I said that I am a relief worker. She says, what is this? And I began to tell her about the relief work. She was very interested. She talked about the problems she was having in her schools. We showed her the solution to those problems. She says, I would like to know more about this relief work. We're going to find out that this is the way that we're going to get into the cities to do the loud cry. Do you know we're told in Great Controversy that the, 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 the Waldenses could not go into towns as missionaries where they would have been persecuted. The chapter says that the Waldenses would have been spurned as missionaries, but they were welcomed as merchants. 
So it was the entering wedge by which they could go into the door and do what God has said. The truth will be brought before those who need it by these efforts. And let me go back. Uh, tell them that the book you are selling contains truth that they need where? In this course. It says, by these efforts, two objects will be again. What are the two? Number one, the truth will be brought before those who need to hear it. Number two, what? Is there a plan? Yes or no? How can you complain that you don't have money or means to do this work if you haven't done what God told you to do? And someone said, well, I don't know it. At ignorance, God winks at it, but now he's opening up our eyes to what the work is. Let us continue. Nothing will help us more at this stage of our work than to understand to fulfill the mission of the greatest medical missionary work, me medical missionary that's ever trod this earth. Who is that? The object of our mission is the same as the object of Christ's mission. He's given us a work identical to his. Now, you know that statement. It's cut off, but you know the statement. It says, Christ's method, what's the next word? Alone. alone. Christ's method what? Alone. What does alone mean? By itself. So you don't have to add anything to it? Christ's method alone will give us what? True success in reaching the people. Will the loud cry reach the people, yes or no? So when we give the loud cry, we are succeeding in reaching the people. So whose method are we using when we give the loud cry? Christ's method. Now, where, what, where would I find that quotation? Ministry of healing. <laughs> Ministry of healing, 143. Christ's methods alone will give me true success. I hope you begin to find something out that this book was designed to take the gospel and put, and put it in the context of the solution to life's problems. And they were to teach us this. Now, it goes on. Watch now. My question is, do you want to know Christ's method, yes or no? Have you ever wondered, does God have a plan of teaching you how to work how he worked? I wonder if the prophet tells us what the plan is. And I wonder if she says that the relief work is designed to do this. Volume 6, 471. Let's read together. A good beginning has, begun, uh, has been made in the sale of what? Christ, I mean, listen, we're back at the books again. Someone says, I didn't know Sister White wrote so much about it. Yes, she did. We could fill hours talking about it, but we don't have that. We got to get ready to move on. It says, a decided work is to be done in accomplishing Brother Davis's plan. God's plan. Let every stroke tell for the master in the selling of Christ's object lessons. Young men, do we have any young men in here? Young men, you who think of entering the ministry, take up this what? Talk about this, talk about this, very talk about the relief work. The handling of the book placed in your hands. What books? Christ's object lesson, ministry. Is to be your. In improving this opportunity, you will certainly advance, number one, in a knowledge of God. Do you want to know God? Yes. Number two, of the best what? So when you start carrying these books, you learn the best method. This is why I can sit and talk to anybody, not at Venice, and we start talking. What do you do? I'm a relief worker. What is that? I talk about relief work. No matter who they are, no matter what they do. And do you know that every seven at Venice is to be a relief worker? Did you know that? I'm going to show you a quotation a little bit later on. You want some more? Amen. Let me do some more. 56471. Pass on that. Continue. Now, what? Now, this is, this is one of the most beautiful quotations. Beautiful. Sweet. 16 Manuscript 24. Let's read it slowly together. What did it say? The Lord, not, not Brother Davis, but what? The Lord has made the sale of this book. You know what this book is talking about? Christ, I'll be resting in the ministry of healing. Has made the sale of this book a what? Means of what? Teaching our people how to come in touch with those not of their faith. So someone says, how can we not reach the nine Adventists? Because we're not doing the relief work. This work teaches us how to take the message, not only to seven Adventists, but to those outside of our denomination as a solution to the problems of life. Isn't that what the gospel is? It says, and how to impart to them a knowledge of the truth for what? Many have been converted just by reading this book. 
You want some more? Is that what Joseph did in Egypt, yes or no? He solved the problems. Now, what I want to do is, is take a few more moments now to look at some of the problems. Would you like to look at some of the problems? And let's look at it just for a few moments. We're going to move quickly through this and look at a few of the problems. We see now this is an inspired plan that is to start outposts, sanitariums, and every other institution. Let's continue a little further. We know that. I'm going to pass through that. Repeatedly, Outpost Centers has these institutions. We looked at that. And Outpost is not a branch. It is a tree. You say, what do you mean? I was walking and working in, 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 our, in our little country retreat, and the Lord gave me this object lesson as I was there. He gave me this object lesson as I was there. I pulled the tree down. We, we, I broke off a branch, and I dropped it on the ground, and I was working, doing other things. I come back to the branch, and guess what the branch is? Dead. Why is the branch dead? Because it's broken off to what it's supposed to be a part of. And the only way it can live, the only way the branch can live, is as it, when it remains a part of what it is supposed to be a part of. Is that right? Now, you'll find institutions that have a sanitarium, which is only a branch. Or a school, which is only a branch. Or a publishing house, which is only a, you know, if you study through the writings, you'll hear that the right arm, it says this is the health, uh, health work, is a branch of the work. That the publishing work is a branch of the work. And we break the branches off, take it into the country, and think it's going to live. It's not going to live like that. We need a tree of life in which all of the branches are formed into one tree, a system of living based on the plan of redemption as revealed in heaven's sanctuary. This is that plan. Jesus was doing all four of them at one time. Am I right? All right, let's continue. Let's look at this problem. Let's, we can get there. My heart is rejoiced that I have learned the revival of the what? Now, do you think, do you, do you think that, that, that God is happy when the relief work is revived? Yes or no? You want to revive the heart? You want to revive the heart of this church? Relief work. Let's continue. Now, are the, what are the relief works designed largely to do? We've been talking about this a little. Let's read this one. Many have never learned what? How to sell the books that are dedicated simply to giving money to individuals. How to sell the books that are dedicated to the what? Advancement of our what? You mean to tell me that there are books that can actually bring institutions into existence. Is that right? Now, most people don't know how to carry ministry of healing that way. Most people sell ministry of healing, they get it out in the community, if they do get it out, but they don't know how to get it out in a way that will start a sanitarium. They can get Christ's object lessons out, but they don't know how to get it out in a way that will start a school or a publishing house. So my brothers and sisters, there is training that must take place to understand this, and this is what must go on. But this says, but such should not excuse themselves. Even if you don't know it, don't excuse yourself. You thought you was getting away, didn't you? They should do what? Study diligently how they may do their part faithfully in connection with the circulation of these what? Our schools and sanitariums. What if I have an institution that's not doing it the way God said do it? Our schools and sanitariums must be conducted on a what? How are we going to bring our institutions on a high plane of sufficiency? Efficiency. And a solid responsibility rests upon us all to help place these institutions on vantage ground by, by, by what? Giving the relief books a wide circulation. How are we going to help our institutions? You see, once you understand how to care, I'm going to show you that just before we close. Once you understand how the relief work works, then you understand how you can help the institution. Ones that have never been established and those that are already established, but not according to the blueprint. Will you say, what do you mean? Now, you'll find out if your institution is doing exactly what this book says, you have a sanitarium. But you'll find out that if you were to listen long enough, most institutions are not doing what this book says. And I don't say it in condemnation, only in education. Are you with me? In fact, if you were to listen to the average person talk on health, the first seminar, they begin to tell you about herbs. Am I right? Now, herbs are bad. Am I right? No, they're not bad. Do they have a place in God's plan? Yes, they do. But my brothers and sisters, if you were to read this lovely volume, 
How many times does the word herb appear? Once. In over 500 pages, one time. But when it's used, is it talking about the herbs the way we think about it? It's talking about food. Just food. Nothing wrong with herbs. It has its place. But brothers and sisters, do you know that a true sanitarium is to teach us not just to have herbs, but it's to teach us how to live. This book says that Christ, 365, Christ came as heaven's ambassador to teach us how to live. Now, my brothers and sisters, this says we look at that and pass on that. What is problem number one? I was going to say, well, that's problem number one. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll post it. We can pass it. We talk about some of this. I'll come back. I don't want to go to this right now. Well, and this is talking about how the, the final phase, but it doesn't start this way. The relief work starts it all. Pass on this. We found out uh, uh, sanitary starts it all. Found about the hygiene restaurant. I want, I want to go there. Pass on that. Now, problem one. You read it? What do you think is one of the first problems that is in, that's going to be exist in the world today in the last days? Because remember, we ought to be problem solvers, right? If you study the life of Christ, the reason why Christ was so effective was because all he was doing all day long was solving problems. Someone was sick, he solved their problem. Someone had family problems, he solved their problem. And as a result, it opened them up for the gospel. Am I right? So we have to learn how to solve problems. So problem number one, Christ 11, page 9. The time is fast coming when the controlling power of labor unions will be very oppressive. This is the revolution. Would it come out of the seas? For in the future, the what? The what? The problem of what? Buying and selling will be a what? Now I want to ask you a question. Do you know that if you do the relief work properly, it will solve your problems of buying and selling? Did you know that? You say, what do you mean? Joseph, do you remember what they began to start doing? What did they exchange for food? In the, uh, what did they exchange? In, in, in the time of Joseph, what were people exchanging when they didn't have money? Did, do you remember what they did? They started exchanging food. Go to Luke for a moment. Go to Luke chapter 8. Let me show you something. Go to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Did Christ do the relief work? Yes or no? Yes, he did. Luke chapter 8. Notice what the Bible says. Beginning in verse 1. Luke 8 verse 1. What does it say? It says... And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and what? He's doing a city mission right now. Preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Verse 2. And certain women which had been what? Had they been relieved? Yes or no? They were healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene out of whom went what? Did he solve her problems? Yes or no? Verse 3. And Joanna, the wife of Treza, Herod's, you know who Herod was? He was the leading government official of the largest uh, nation at that time. So Christ's ministry reached to the upper echelons of society. Then it says, that, 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 that it says, it says, as he healed her, the rich, the steward, and Susanna, and many others, which did what? Ministered unto what? Him of their what? So even when Jesus did not buy or sell, the people that he healed would buy and sell for him. So if we do this relief work and we help someone during the revolution and, and they say, do you need anything? You say, well, you don't have anything. They said, no, yes, you do. I will give you anything you need. This is the legacy of following the ministry of Jesus. Go to the first. So it solves this problem of buying and selling. If you do this, you don't have to worry about buying and selling if you do God's plan. Let's continue. I'm going to pass on, but nobody knows that I'm going to pass on. I think you get it, uh, that. Problem two. Can, do, is there another problem? Let's see another problem. Let's read it. As what? Religious aggression subverts the liberties of our what? This is getting ready to be anarchy, ruin. Those who stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their own sake, they should, while they have opportunity, become intelligent to four things. What four things? Disease, what else? Its causes, what else? Prevention, what else? It's cure. And those who do this will find a field of labor where? 
There will be suffering ones, plenty of them, who will need help, not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who know not the what. So if we will understand the ministry of healing and then begin to do the relief work, getting into the communities doing this, then those who are being helped by us, this tells us there will be a field of labor everywhere because in the last days, sickness increases. During the revolution, sickness is terrible. Do you know that in every revolution, do you know that even Hitler let in the American Red Cross? for healing. Now, let's continue. Healthcare crisis. Are we there, yes or no? Yes. yes. Who is that? Who is that? What was he known for starting a what? Revolution. We realized last night we talked about how the first American relief ships arrived there during the Russian Revolution, and they were the first one to respond. It says, that, 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 it says the relief what? Don't you like that? <laughs> The relief workers, the relief workers were among the what? First outsiders to break through Russia, through this revolution. So if we're going to break through the revolution and reach people when we have to finish the work, then we have to come in as what? Did God tell us this? Yes. I told you about this. I'm passing on this. China, all over the world, same thing. Now watch what happens if we do this. Now this one, this quotation is almost too beautiful. This quotation is almost too beautiful to read. Are you ready to read this one? Are you sure? Now you got to sit down and read this one. What did it say? Counselor, parents, teachers, and students find fit. Let's read together. Though some people say, you know, some people say, they say, well, well, if I do this work, everybody will know that I'm out in the country. They have GPS. They have satellite. They can see me, so they're going to know. But if you do the reef work, it doesn't matter. Watch. Those who went what? Out to work for the what? Now, what was the method of how we're going to work for the neighbors? Doing what? Did the prophet say that? Instructed to report any case of sickness they might what? So when I go to a house and I find this, then I record if there's any sickness, and I re-record, and I come back and relieve them of that sickness. It becomes a treatment room. A treatment room. Now, it says... I report this, uh, it says, in any case of sickness that I may find, those who had the what? From the sanitarium and giving treatment to the sick were encouraged to use their knowledge in a what? Practical way, they go out and use it. To work for the master came to be regarded as Christ-like what? So the relief work became Christian recreation. Someone says, well, we can't play basketball anymore? Well, there's a better recreation. What is it? Relief work? Someone says you can't play football? No, you got something better. What is it? Relief work? Now don't get me excited up in here. We, 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 we start another camp meeting. <laughs> All right, counseling, counseling, parents, teachers, and five, And now watch. After a time, the what? Sunday labor question came up for consideration. It seemed as if the lines were soon to be drawn so tightly about us that we should not be able to work on what? But guess what work they could still do on Sunday? <laughs> Our school was situated in the heart of the what? Was there any neighbors around them? They were in the heart of the woods. Far from any village, or very few even do this way. Even if you don't see neighbors around you still are within people right around you still. It says, no one was living near enough to be disturbed in any way by anything we might do. Somebody says, that's blueprint living. Is that right? But still, there would have been a problem if you don't do relief work. Nevertheless, we were what? So they were in the middle of nowhere, but they were still being what? Now, if that was Sister White's day, what do you think they're doing today? Why, they have their eye on you right now. <laughs> but look, 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 watch. It says... The officers were urged, police, to observe what we were doing on the school what? Premises. And they did come. Did they come? But, praise God, they did not appear to notice those who were at what? Praise God. Why? Their confidence and respect for our people had been, so, had been sold by the work we had done for the what? in that community that they did not wish to interfere with our armless labor on what? 
because of the co relief work in the community, they said, look, he's an outpost. Let him alone. That man is solving our problems. Amen. If you touch him, I'm in trouble. <laughs> but if you let him go, my problem is solved. Did they do that to Jesus? Do you know, brothers and sisters, that this is why the religious leaders could not kill Jesus? It was for fear of the because Jesus had solved their, he healed the sick, he fed them, he fixed their marriages, he saw them, and all that's in these books. And as they did that ministry, it said they had to sneak at night to kill Jesus because if they did it in the daytime, it would have started a revolution. They would have said, don't touch that man or we'll kill you. That man made me see. Now I can see you to kill you. Problem number one, three. And this is the real problem. God's purpose. To prepare us when judgment passes from the what? Dead to the living. You know, that's the real issue. You know that, don't you? The judgment of the living, that's the real issue. You mean to tell me the relief work is to prepare us for the judgment of the living? Yes. Listen, listen. You know what our biggest problem is, why we still sin? It's not just the, it's not the jewelry. It's not, it's not the flesh meat. You know what the biggest problem is? Selfishness. That's it. And if you leave everything else and still are selfish, no judgment of the living. Watch. On the morning of October 23rd, 1879, about 2 o'clock, the Spirit of the Lord rested upon me. And I beheld scenes in the coming what? Judgment. Language fails me in which to give an adequate description of the things which passed before me and of the effect they had upon my mind. Volume 4, 384. The judgment was set. The books were open. It talks about this ledger. I wish you could read that part, but it talks about this ledger. And it talked about it seemed like a burning flame of fire. There were also headings of every column. Underneath these, opposite each name were recorded in their respective columns, the lesser what? Sins. Under covetousness came falsehood. Theft, robbery, fraud, avarice. That's the love of uh, riches. Under ambition came pride and extravagance. Jealousy stood at the head of malice, envy, and hatred. And intemperance headed a what? Long list. So do you know that the sins are organized in heaven under principles? Intemperance, every other sin comes down. In the books of heaven, everything in heaven is organized. But under the general heading of what? Came every other sin. So you had intemperance, you had the fornication, you had pornography, you had all this. But the general heading of all the sins in the judgment is what? Selfishness. Why? Why? There is nothing save the selfish heart of man, desire of ages, that lives unto itself. Page 20. Sin at Martha's. There is no leaf of the forest or lowly blade of grass, but has its what? Ministry. Every one of us that have ministry. Let's read this together. Desire verse 21. Itself, this law was broken. Sin, let's read this together. Sin originated in what? Let's repeat that. Sin originated in what? One more time. Sin originated in what? So if I'm going to sin, it's because I'm seeking self. There's selfishness. Am I right? No selfishness, no sin. I can take off jewelry and still be selfish. I can reform my diet and still be selfish. I can change my clothing and still be selfish. Now, do I need to do all those things? Yes. It's selfishness that wouldn't do it. But selfishness is the biggest problem of our hearts. And the Day of Atonement is designed to stop selfishness. Do you know how? On the Day of Atonement, one of the duties of the congregation is to afflict the soul. To do what? Now, how do we afflict the soul? Fast. Now, one way to fast is in health reform, but that's not what I'm studying with you today. I'm studying with you the relief work. Amen? So now we do need the fast. That's part of it, but that's not all. Does Isaiah 58 tell us of a new fast? What does it say? Let's go there. Isaiah 58. Let's turn there quickly. Isaiah 58. The Bible says, verse 1, Cry aloud and spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Verse 3, whereof have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? 
Wherefore have we what? Afflicted. This is the affliction of the soul. Our soul and now is taking no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast, you find what? Pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice be heard. Now, in other words, don't fast like that. What if we change our diet but are still selfish? Is that the true fast? No. The changing of the diet is to change the character. And the basic problem is selfishness. Now, look at the next verse. They were talking about, talking about the diet. Yes, yeah, true fasting. The abstinence from every stimulating food. Changing the diet, yes. But on David told me there's a greater fast. Bible goes on. Verse five, 5 says, Is, this is God talking now, Is it such a fast that I have chosen? One day, a day for a man to afflict his soul, just a day? Is it to bow down his head as a bull rush, spread sackcloth, ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Verse 6. Is not this the fast that what? I have chosen. To loose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go what? That sounds like relief work to me. Verse 7. Is it not to deal thy bread to the what? Hungry. Showing them how to end world hunger through this gospel. And that thou bring the poor that are cast out where? The Bible says in verse 8, then shall thy light break forth as the morning and the health spring forth. Do you know the prophet says that when medical missionaries do this work, that the glory of the Lord will be the reward, just like Isaiah 58. Now let's continue. This afflicting of the soul is part of a duty of the congregation on the day of atonement. I don't have time for that. I'm going to rush on. Rush on that. Verse 9. Past that, we talked a little bit about that. We need to go back to that right now. Now, look at this. We're getting ready to close. Publishing ministry. 365. Let's read together. What's the first word? Urge. What does urge mean? Just say, we have relief books, and if you like, you can have them. <laughs> urge what? Urge. How many? Urge. Well, that doesn't include you. Does it? Urge every seven in his family to awaken and to become the Lord's what? Relief workers. Let's see. Consider the... Well, we're right back at the same place again. Consider the books that the Lord has placed in your possession for the what? What books are those? For the relief of our schools and sanitariums. Many opportunities have been given you to show that you what? Do you appreciate it? The way to show it is to get a book. It says, revealed in these books, if these condition, if these precious volumes are appreciated as they should be, self what? Does that sound like unselfish work? Yes or no? Self-denying efforts will be made to bring them to notice of the what? If you understand what we're talking about tonight, every family in this room would get these books and try to get these books to every person they know. Let brethren and sisters encourage one another to become acquainted with their what? Tell them the story of the what? Gift of these books for the support of our what? This is what they tell us to do. Go to your neighbor and tell that you're getting ready to help the community by establishing a center, an institution to solve the problems of life. And tell of your own interests and seeking to place them in the hands of acquaintances and what? Tell the story to the what? Men, women, and can engage in this work. We have yet to learn of persons who, after reading the book, have expressed unfavorable opinions regarding them. Remember, this book is to teach us how to come in contact with those who are not of our When you go to your jobs, do you know you can be a relief worker and stay on your job? This is really well for you. can be a relief worker wherever you are. You can say, wherever my friends are, wherever my acquaintances are, I'm going to start getting books, and I'm going to tell them about this work in the community and how you can begin to institute it yourself. A general movement. That's worldwide. That's the loud cry. A general movement is needed, and this must begin with what? I'm not going to wait for the whole church to jump on board because that time will. I'm going to start myself. 
And I've already started. Who's going to join? It says, in every what? How many churches? Let every member, how many members? Of every family. Well, that's everybody. Am I right? Make determined efforts to deny self and to help forward this, the work. Let children act a part. Let all cooperate. Let us do our best at this time to uh, render to God our offering to carry out his specified will and thus make an occasion for witness for him and for his truth in a world of darkness. The lamp is in our hands. Let its light shine forth. How? Brightly. This is God's plan. This is the word. And the common people are to do this. Starting this sanitarium. But what work starts the sanitarium? The belief word. Pass on that. Now, this tells us that when we do that, that you know that many of the wealthy, do you know that many of the wealthy are investing means right now? Now, what I, in the relief work, we made a website. Now, I want you to write it down. Write down thereliefwork.com. Thereliefwork.com. It explains the whole program. Thereliefwork.com. It's on the back of the books. You'll see it. And it talks about this. But now, uh, in this uh, work, when you start going through and you see what's going on, it says that, that did you know that you, you do research to understand what's happening in the community? And what you'll find, the world right now, uh, do you know that the health care is so great that they're looking for people in the community to have better ways of dealing with health? Do you know that right now that that's in the community? Do you know that there are philanthropists that are wanting to give large sums of money to do this, and the prophets use those very words and said that if we know this work, God would send those Gentiles, the wealth of the Gentiles will be converted unto us. Isaiah chapter 60. Let men who have the ability to tell what a standing term should be and the need of that there is for such institutions go to the Gentiles. It says there are men of the world who will give up their means for schools and what? Do you know that when McGann did this work uh, 100 years ago, when McGann did this work and started Madison, do you know that a multimillionaire came to McGann and he said, look, I like the way that you're raising money. You're not coming to millionaires with your hands out. You're coming to us, telling us what you can do for us. And so he gave him money. You know, when you go anywhere and people go to ASI, I need money. I'm not even interested in that. Because God has a plan. If I go to ASI, I'm going to go to ASI to help somebody to learn God's plan. You should go not to take, but to what? It is more blessed to give than to receive. We wouldn't look so crazy trying to beg for money if we understood this plan. We wouldn't get on the internet begging for money if we knew this plan. A great work is to be done in our world in a what? Do you want to do this? And we must study to understand and appreciate more than we have in past years the providence of God in placing in our hands the precious volumes what? You can't get away from it. Do we have to do a great work in a little time? What means is he put in our hands? And we will be surprised when God takes the reins in his hands, the simple means that he will use. Someone says, you can't use a stone to take down a Goliath. That's too simple. You can't take that man and tell him to, to dip seven times in the water and give him hydrotherapy. That's too simple. But God uses simple means. I'm on, I, I can't tell you this story now. I was getting ready to tell you a story, but... No, no, it's all right. We're getting ready to close. Has been presented to me as a very fruitful field. Christ, I'm mission field. The thousands of transient residents and visitors who will be benefited by the lessons contained. Those who bear responsibilities in our sanitariums should act wisely in this matter, encouraging all to gather by this means as much as possible for the money required to meet the expenses of the different what? Institutions. Why was not someone appointed at your what? At your what? To present the interest of this line of work to our what? What happened at this camp meeting? This day is the scripture fulfilled in our ears. In your failure to do this, you have lost a precious opportunity to place large blessings within the reach of what? Do you know that we're not going to be blessed simply by this? Do you know that if you get a book, you will be blessed? It says to place it within the reach of the people, and you also lost an opportunity of raising what? means for the relief of our institutions. My brother, let us encourage our people to take up this work without what? Don't wait till tomorrow. Well, how can we begin? That's what people have been asking. Why are people so slow to understand what the Lord has, uh, uh, would have them do? Our leading workers should prepare what? To use the opportunities that are large and what else? To present what? These books. Did we present these books? 
Now, what's the second thing? Call for volunteers who will do what? If you want to set this work in motion, you got to get the book. What's the first step? The students who take up the work, if you're going to take up the reading for it, what do you got to do? Of selling Christ, I'm listening to the ministry of healing. We'll need to what? Study the book they so you buy the book and go, and go do the relief work in the community. Is that right? Yeah, they study the book they expect to sell. As they do what? Familiarize their mind with the subject matter of the book in hand. So you should be able to go through each chapter, and you should be able to know how each chapter solves the problems of life. It says you must become familiar. Number two, endeavor only to teach it. So first, I study what the principles are to solve problems. And then I seek to do what? Do you think that will change my life if I do that? Do you think that will make me like Jesus if I do that? It's Christ's object lessons in the ministry. It's Jesus. The wisdom is making us like Jesus. And endeavor to practice teachings. When we do this, they will develop in what? And what else? Do you know the inspiration? In your hand now, I, didn't, I don't have it here, but in your hand now, it says that when relief work goes around a church, it says that there will be a revival in the church wherever relief work is done. It says it will unify churches that are divided. It says the messages in what? What books? What books? Contain not a light, but what? Revelation 18, 1, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, and the earth was, why, he is a relief worker. This is the light to give to the world. The teachers in our schools should encourage the students to just read quickly through the books, to make a careful study of what? Every chapter. Now, we developed a curriculum for the relief work to help those um, begin to understand what they should do as they go through this book. It says they should teach these truths to their students and those who we're training right now, we do this Sabbath by Sabbath. Are to seek to inspire the youth with a love for the what? Precious thoughts the Lord has entrusted to us to communicate to the world. So first you've got to get the book. Once you get the book, study the book, practice them, and after a few short months of that, it's time to start that relief work in the community. That's what they did in California. That's how they start the sanitarium there. This is God's plan. Now, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. Inspiration says that our homes are to become like heaven on earth. Is that right? Do you know, brother and sister, we're told that a sanitarium should be run just like a Christian home. Do you know that every one of the institutions, we talked about the, the main institution being a sanitarium. Is that right? But there's a greater institution than that. Greater institution than the publishing house, greater institution than the school. What do you think is the greatest institution of an outpost? The home. And my brothers and sisters, guess what book that God has given us to learn how to deal with the home? Well, if heaven is beginning on this earth, home should be made all the word implies, the little heaven upon the earth. Society is composed of what? And it's what the heads of families make it. Out of the heart are the issues of life, and the heart of the community, of the church, and of the nation is the what? Pass on this. I want you to see something very important as we close. I can't go through that. Uh, just showing the four problems, how they come in, what the home is supposed to learn, seven principles of that, the building of the home. But now, this is ministry of healing. It should be image. This is in this book. Thank you. The restoration and uplifting of humanity begins in the garden. Begins in the workshop. Begins in the church. So if you're going to solve the problems of humanity, where's it going to begin? In the home. The work of parents underlies every other. So the anarchy in society is only an outgrowth of the anarchy in the Society is composed of families, and it's what the heads of families make it, out of the heart of the issues of life, and the heart of the what? So if you're going to restore the community, you must do it one home at a time. That's the slogan for the relief word. Praise God. <laughs>
of the, the heart of the church, the heart of the nation is the what? The well-being of the same. The success of the, the prosperity of the. Now, why is the nation going to pass a Sunday law? To restore temporal prosperity. But prosperity is not based on money. Prosperity is based on the condition of your home. A man can be poor in this world's money and have a little heaven on the earth. The success of the church, the prosperity of the nation depend upon the home. Now, where do we learn that the stop the revolution starts in the home? This is the life that's supposed to be given to the world. This is the gospel that's going to simplify the problems. But how can you share it out there if you have not tried it in here? Father, we don't mean to do it. Please forgive us. But help us to see that the devil doesn't want us to get this part right here. For this is where it wins or fails. In Jesus' name, amen. Why is the Pope coming to America? He is going to put it in the context of saving the family. Everything God does, Satan has it. The only way to stop the counterfeit is to show the real. And when he says that the son-in-law is going to save the family, I say, that's a bottomless pit. But there is an institution that God gave for the family. Way back in the Garden of Eden, he established a seven-day Sabbath. Way back there, he gave us this country living. Way back there, he gave us the diet. Way back there, he gave us this system of living. I say it's time to start now. What do you say? Someone says, well, don't you know, Jesus spent more time in healing than in preaching? Well, he spent more time in industrial work than in healing. Am I right? He only spent three and a half years doing public healing. That brother was a carpenter much longer than that. So industrial work was done more than his preaching and healing. Combined. We normally say that. But I have something even better than that. There was something else that he spent more time than teaching and healing, preaching, and industrial work. It was his experience in the home. Now, where do I learn that from? I turned to this little book, Ministry of Healing, The Wisdom of the Great Physician. And we call the chapter a functional home in a dysfunctional society. The restoration and uplifting of humanity begins in the home. Let me read another as we close. In this same section on the home, The home should be the, to the children the most attractive place in the world. It says children from such a home, the world will have no attraction on them. Brothers and sisters, if I keep reading, you know what it says? It says all you have to do is look at the, 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 the length of time that Jesus spent in his home, in the home, and it says we will see the importance of the ministry of the home. I think that we need to start in our homes. As we charge today, what is the greatest thing we can do? We can get this book and begin to make a careful study. Not so we can just apply it out there, because you cannot give what you do not. Let's start with our homes. Amen? And say what Joshua said, as for me and we. Is it a beautiful plan? You want to be a part of this plan? Call for volunteers. We might have a few more books left. If you have a desire to do this, do that. Sign up so you can get the email to talk about how to study. We have a plan of how to go through the books in three months. How many months? The Bible says that we, have a, a, we must do a great work in a few months. Is that right? So we arrange the plan in this way. And as you go through the books, we can learn it and you can understand it. We can get the work. I say it's time. What do you say? I say a quick hand.
You need relief. See, this sister says she needs relief workers right now. You see why there's a need for relief training. Amen. <laughs> because it's time to do it now. We will get in contact with you. And we will deploy some relief workers to you as we get them by the grace of God. Amen. Uh, if you've signed up back there, only if you signed up back there, <laughs> it won't just come. But if you sign up, it will come to you if you sign up. Is there anyone else? No, no, you can get the books today. Yeah. We want you to be able to do something when? Now. And so you're going to leave these, but not to see. Let, let me quickly tell you this. Somebody says, well, I already have Christ-Object lessons in the ministry. And the prophet says, in the future, things are going to be done to increase their sale. Right now, today, Christ-Object lessons are not sold like this entire time. You have the whole book. It's not put in this context. You see, the rate Christ-Object lessons were written was not placed in this context. It's supposed to be done for a way to help the community and start this whole plan. This book is done in that way. It has sections in it that actually show what the purpose of the book is, what you're supposed to be saying, what it's supposed to be doing. It's in the very book itself. That it's connected to it. There is no book in the world that does it like this. Someone says, do we call Remnant? No, it's not Remnant's book. It's our book. Do you know that we have the rights to these books? They have to ask us to get these books. These books belong to us. God has placed it in our hands because it's time to set it in motion. So you have to call us. And what we'll do, she said, well, how much do you sell them for? <laughs> what we do, brother and uh, sister, if you get it individually, you have a price for the individual book. But when you become a relief worker to get large amounts of the book, then you get a special relief work price to get them out in the masses. Now, if you're just buying one book, you don't need a relief work price. Amen. <laughs> but when you get them out to do a relief work for the community, then you get the relief work price. And you're already on that relief team. You're on this team. She's already signed up. We've already sent it out. She's been go going through this program. We've already been doing it. There are others in this room that have it. And if you're not there, I call for volunteers. I don't ask. I urge you. Every seven Adventists, the prophet says. Did I say that? All right. Let's close right here. If we'll go home and do that, it won't be the same. Our life will change, our home will change, our community will change, and we can set an operation the loud cry. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your Holy Spirit and what you share with us today. This relief work is all throughout the writings, dear God. But we haven't seen it. You are now anointing our eyes with our salve that we may see because it's time to establish the outposts, but in your appointed way, your design. Help us, Lord, to go through the handout and study it. Help us to get these books to study it and then become acquainted with our family and friends and neighbors and to get them out as far and as fast as possible. Relief books all over this world. There's a quotation that says that every home in the world needs relief books. We have a mandate by God to put in the home of over 7 billion people. Help us, Lord. Help us. But may we see in it all and through it all you want to rid us of selfishness so that we can become like Jesus and help others. This would have stopped the revolution. Revolution came because of selfishness of rich and poor. Help us, Lord. I pause the prayer of this. Someone that says, I commit to become a relief worker today. Today. To become a problem solver by learning the light from heaven so I can learn it this way. I want to study these books in this way. Raise your hand wherever you are. Praise God. Look at this room full of relief workers. Do you know that if we went out of this room to become relief workers, there are more in this room now to finish the work. Heavenly Father, may we never go back on this commitment. May we get these books and make it a morning and evening study. Morning, ministry of healing. Evening, Christ out lessons. Morning, Christ out lessons. Evening, ministry of healing. May we study these books until they change us and make us just like Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.